Okay. Now that you have touched upon KP, uh, I would uh, like to ask you point blank, what is the real difference between Vedic astrology and KP? Okay. Are they yeah. related, unrelated? Okay. They are very much related. And this is a question which is like the top of the mind question for many people. Um, right. For many people who are into um, astrology in different forms of astrology, in a very simple answer I'm going to give you is that Krishnamurti Paddhati and Vedic astrology, Parashari astrology or Jaimini, they are all astrology at the end of the day. The only difference is, not the only difference, the differences lie in the method in which we approach analysis and prediction. So let's say, for example, if someone asks a question, what kind of vocation am I suited for? When are my periods of rise and fall in profession? There is definitely a very good way to do it in Vedic astrology. Rashi Chakra, Navamsha, and especially the Dashamsha. Depending on which Dasha you're going to choose, the Ashtatvari, Dadashatvari, or Mimshotvari, the choice of Dasha. And other tools are there. That's one way of finding the answer. KP also finds the answer, but in a different way. So it, if I have to answer in very simple, uh, you know, because you're an astrologer, I am an astrologer, we shouldn't get into discussing terms now, which our, uh, you know, uh, audience will not understand. So in very simple way, is just a different approach to prediction. It's just a different path. And Neither is narrow or the other is wide. These two paths are not comparable to each other. Vedic astrology stands on its own right. KP stands on its own right. Now, where is the commonality then? Where they can shake hands with each other? I have always said in all the forums, Vedic astrology and KP astrology are just like elder brother and younger brother. Elder brother is big, wide, all-encompassing. The younger brother is fast, you know, agile, he wants to do things quick, he wants to borrow something from the elder brother, all that. So in KP astrology, Krishnamurti Paddhati, we still have the same nine planets and nine grahas and the same significations, karakatvas. Saturn is still a delay maker. Saturn is still lame, okay? And Saturn is still the graha raj. Similarly, in KP astrology, just like Vedic astrology, there are the 12 Rashis, Mesh Rashi to Mean Rashi. Same Karakatva, same significations, Agni Priti Vayu Jal or Char Sthir uh, is the same. In and fact, also, what is interesting here is, sorry to interrupt, yeah. that the, the significations are practically the same even in Western astrology. Absolutely. Though, though the zodiac is entirely different. <laughs> Exactly, yes. yes. But in KP and uh, Vedic astrology, the zodiac is almost nearly the same. Yes, it's the same sidereal Nirayana zodiac, the, yeah. uh, the unmovable zodiac, the fixed zodiac. But I hear that KP uses a different Ayanansha than, yes. than Chitrapaksha or Lahiri's Ayanansha. That's right. Um, uh, Ayanamshas have uh, been a very... Um, very important part of every astrological systems and uh, whether it's Lahiri Ayanamsha or Raman Ayanamsha or Krishnamurti Ayanamsha, uh, Fagan Bradley, uh, Sri Sri Yukteswar Ayanamsha and then Zero Ayanamsha, which is uh, the, uh, the Western topical. Model. Yes. Yeah. So a uh, case Krishnamurti uh, if, if we understand the way in which case Krishnamurti developed this system uh, throughout his early years and middle age and almost near um, 1956 to 1957, he was an ardent Vedic astrologer, and he wanted to uh, he, he wanted to bring perfection in his prediction. 
somehow he was not able to get to that level of perfection and he developed the krishnamurti paddhati after he was initiated into uchchista ganapati sadhana by uh, chandrasekhar uh, his holiness chandrasekhar saraswati swami gal of kanchi kamakoti pitam and when he was initiated directly by him and he was given that mantra and the idol in in a few years than that he suddenly discovered or invented two things are very different although but uh, it it always existed in the system he might have only discovered but people like to call it as an invention where he broke down the nakshatras each and every nakshatra into unequal parts based on vimshottari dasha proportion so nakshatra is broken down into sub divisions that is why kp goes by the name sub lords which are basically sub division lords now although he invented this method he had only about 10 to 12 years to bring perfection to the system which uh, as far as i know from my guruji and his guruji because he was trained directly by krish krishnamurti ji 1972 he expired and 1970 his first book was published in 1970 71 there was a hurried publication of uh, six readers and that was done very hurriedly and anybody reading those six readers will find there are some uh, discrepancies or anomalies in the book so ideally he did not get a chance to bring about perfection in ayanamsha to do research on lahiri ayanamsha raban ayanamsha or his own ayanamsha with his sadhana with his um initiation he came to the conclusion of a different epoch date so 285 ad and 290 291 ad the lahirian uh, kp so he came with a 6 minute difference with lahiri ayanamsha which is not a very big difference but while doing kp astrology if there are borderline cusps cusps which are at the borderline of a sublord changing the ayanamsha might make a difference but there are ways to check that are you on the right track that is the second invention which k s krishnamurti did which was ruling planets so ruling planets are the planets which are available to the astrologer at the moment of judgment so those ruling planets can actually tell whether you are looking at the right place and that can give you a clear idea whether you at all need to change the ayanamsha or everything is fine so someone, ayanamsha someone changing the ayanamsha the standard ayanamsha of uh, lahiri just by 6 mm-hmm. minutes gives an impression that that person must have done a lot of research and a lot of cross checking of data and then come to the conclusion that there is a 6 minute difference and then the results would come out better so which one which ayanamsha are you using in your practice okay Keep so in practice uh, yeah so so two part to this question so the first part uh we do not have enough uh, published literature on the ayanamsha calculations of ks krishnamurti ks krishnamurti in his book uh, talks about his um sadhana and his initiation and how he was uh, you know kind of illuminated about the kind of ayanamsha that should be taken there may have been a lot of Uh, systematic data analysis and a lot of research going into his uh, final conclusion but that is still so far not available to uh, any public is still not a public document maybe with his family members so uh, i cannot vouch say that he did a thorough research as far as the ayanamsha is concerned and coming to the second part of the question which ayanamsha i use i have been using the kp new ayanamsha because kp old ayanamsha which was originally given by ksk was an annual ayanamsha which used to be given for uh, the month of 15th april of every year and it used to be fixed for the entire year which is not the case for ayanamsha it goes on changing few seconds every week every month so in 1993 his uh, elder son in law uh also goes by the name subramaniam but that is not his second son his son in law 
he made a thorough revision of the ayanamsha and he brought in newcomb's rate of precision or newcomb's rate of correction and in 1993 the ayanamsha was made monthly ayanamsha starting from 1st of january so the kp new ayanamsha which is like 5 uh, minutes a couple of seconds is uh, not a very big deal breaker when it comes to analysis of horoscope i used to use kp old ayanamsha and the new ayanamsha throughout my uh, kp career and it's almost now last 4 years that i have migrated into using lahiri ayanamsha and i also in uh, kapil raj's interview i spoke that i am probably the only living kp astrologer who uses lahiri ayanamsha while doing kp which is like a sacrilege but uh, when it comes to lahiri the reason why i have moved into lahiri is getting dasha bhukti antra system the dasha bhukti antra cascade closer to the date of the event i can also use uh, kp ayanamsha no problem with that i might still get a variation of a couple of days so to go closer to the actual reality lahiri seems to work better you see this uh, uh, sequence of events that he uh, kp himself created one and ayanamsha and then his son in law made a small difference and then you having tried the old and the new kp now you have gone to lahiri because you also have done a lot of research on that and then come to the conclusion that lahiri gives a better uh, prediction so uh, there is a lot of food for thought what else is the difference between uh, vedic and kp i mean what okay. is the methodology behind kp which is distinct from the normal vedic astrology right so um uh, just to conclude the uh, the ayanamsha discussion um i i did not do a uh, very systematic research in terms of data collection and data analysis and do that but what i used to do is uh, when i used to do my predictions and telling people certain event is going to happen between this date range and this date range sometimes it happened little earlier than my starting date range or it happened little later than the ending date range so when i started looking at those and everything was correct then i started questioning where some adjustment may be needed when i uh, shifted to or when i made that uh, retrofitting i was retrofitting my uh, uh, charts then i saw that lahiri ayanamsha is able to bring me closer to the event date so so far is the lahiri ayanamsha which brings closer to the event date so uh, it's it's not a research that i have uh, used to go into lahiri but based on practical chart and based on real outcome of my prediction i am more inclined to stick to lahiri than uh, stick to kp so it, it's not that i i, I use I lahiri know an, i know an astrologer who does western astrology but uses this idea real life right and right. not yes. the topical one so that of course mm-hmm. is a vast jump from one discipline to another exactly. i would like to ask you that uh, in normal vedic astrology there are uh, so many different techniques but one of the prominent ones is to use vargas and uh, most significantly the navansha does kp also use navansha and, and other divisional charts uh, no kp method the krishnamurti paddhati method uh, uses the nirayana rashi chakra and on a nirayana rashi chakra placidus house division is casted the cusps so the lagna degree is the beginning of the house the second cusp is the beginning of the second house so there is one single chart which is the so nirayana that's a big shift chart. from normal vedic astrology where the uh, the the lagna means the center of the house yes it's not the bhava madhya okay so yes, in kp it is, not, it is the beginning it's always the beginning so lagna means is the so if lagna is in uh, 21 degree aries 
Lagna begins from 21 degree Aries and the second house might be 19 degree Taurus. So the span of the Lagna Bhava is not 30 degree. Because it's Placidus semi-arc house division system. So the span of a house can be exactly 30, which is very unlikely. Usually it is more than 30 or less than 30. Even in northern latitudes, what we find is that there are two bhavas in a single rashi, which is called as cuspal displacement. And one rashi, which does not have any bhava, which is an intercepted sign. So in KP astrology, what happens in a single rashi chart, the bhavas are superimposed. So we get to see in Mesh Rashi, which bhava has fallen. Now, planetary positions are reckoned from the bhavas. So let's say in Aries or Mesh Rashi, we are having the Lagna Bhava starting from 21 degrees. And let us say Jupiter is in 12 degrees. So we would not say Jupiter is in Lagna Bhava. We will say Jupiter is in the 12th Bhava. But it is Jupiter, in Aries. It is in Aries, but Jupiter is behind the Lagna Bhava. It is in the span of the 12th Bhava. So Jupiter is in the 12th Bhava, not in Lagna. Yeah, I mean, that's a common practice even in Vedic astrology where they take the take, uh, uh, Bhava Chalit system. So that is exactly. uh, some similar thing there. Yes, yes. So that is that is where you will have uh, you know overlap with the Vedic astrology. So apart from these, KP astrology will also take into account the Star Lord's house occupancy and house ownership signification. And every Star Lord, all the 27 nakshatras are broken down into nine unequal subdivisions. They are called as sub -lord. So the result in KP astrology is derived by analyzing a planet's house occupancy and ownership, the planet's star lord's house occupancy and ownership, and the planet's sub -lord's house occupancy and ownership. These three together will lead to an analysis and a prediction. KP does not use any kind of yogas. So Kemadrum yoga or uh, Panfara yoga or any kind of solar yoga, lunar yoga or other kind of planetary yogas. KP does not use any yoga except K.S. Krishnamurti used to call any combination of Saturn and Moon, whether conjoined and in each other star or aspecting Sama Saptama, he used to call this yoga as Punarfu yoga. Punarfu. Punarfu in the sense that it's a delay making yoga. So Saturn and Moon together will delay the matters of the houses owned and occupied by these planets in the life of the person. That is the only yoga which is used in KP astrology. And KP astrology uses only one type of dasha which is the Vimshottari Dasha. Irrespective of what we see in Gemini system of what are the different uh, planetary uh, configurations giving hint to what kind of Dashas are needed, KP does not at all use that. It's only Vimshottari Dasha. And there is another uh, element which is uh, an invention and an addition is the concept of ruling planets. So a lot of decisions become very easy to take in KP astrology when astrologers take into account the ruling planets which are present at the moment of judgment. So this is what makes KP astrology. There isn't anything more in the original authentic KP astrology. But if you open the internet, you will find people have started proliferating their own theories in the name of KP. And in the name of KP, a lot of things are happening. Those are not KP. The original, authentic, genuine KP is very simple. One Rashi Chakra, Placidus House Division, one single Ayanamsha, which is KP Ayanamsha, one Vimshottari Dasha. These four things, no yoga and no, the but, analysis. But is the, the new people who are uh, 
peddling new material, they can do so under the garb of further research into KP. Are yeah. you suggesting that there is no need to do that? Yes. Now, research, further, further research is when we are looking into the original stuff and studying and analyzing the original stuff. Now what is happening, uh, and it has happened since quite a number of years now, instead of keeping Krishnamurti Paddhati and trying to see whether different ayanamshas have a different uh, value, value addition, whether different um, dasha systems have their different value addition, people have started going steps forward. So KP astrology is fundamentally three step, the planet, the star lord, and the sub lord. Now people are moving sub lord, star lord, and then sub lord, sub lord. People have moved into sub sub lord. So we have a planet, planet is in a star, star is broken into subdivision. People have broken it into sub subdivision and then sub sub subdivision. And then it's probably infinite. So research is one thing, but then developing entirely something new is completely different. So, so research leads to innovation, but invention is something entirely different. So, so we need to be very careful on the internet that are we looking at innovation or are we looking at brand new invention which has not got into prototype testing? Yeah, in fact, even in Vedic astrology, people are trying to make use of Navansha and then Navansha of Navansha, which they would call D81. So, uh, well, uh, there should be scope for research uh, always in every subject, uh, but uh, uh, the final taste is in testing. So, yes, if it yes. works, then it works. If it doesn't, then yes. it doesn't work. <laughs> Absolutely. Proof of the pudding lies in eating. Yes. So, what are you going to talk about uh, in your uh, Jyotish Kumbha presentation on marriage? Y yes, I, I thought I'll discuss about uh, love, marriage, married life and divorce. So, no, please don't talk about divorce. Okay. Love and marriage are fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I, I kept in mind the Sthan Kala and Patra. So there in US, <laughs> there in US, divorce and second marriage is a hot topic. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so that was the idea, but I am always open to uh, you know uh, you know suggestions. So uh, the, the whole idea is people fall in love, people want to fall in love, and when people fall in love, they may not always want to get married, but they may want to live together and still enjoy life. And I'm talking about. Uh, you know, cultures other than India. And uh, uh, be because there are, in there are a lot of cultures within India which are other than India. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Very true. <laughs> so, so the idea in the Jyotish Kumbha Mela would be to uh, give people an insight using a KP chart, which is fundamentally just one page, just one page uh, diagram. Uh, how one can understand whether a person may fall in love, what kind of love it is going to be, whether the love is going to materialize into marriage or the marriage is going to happen out of negotiation, which is more prevalent in the Indian culture. And then how is going to be the married life, quality of married life, and whether there is divorce. And if there is divorce, whether it's going to be, there is going to be a second marriage. There might not be a divorce. There might be a separation, prolonged separation. So all these, uh, you know, these these rules are so, uh, you know, well laid out in KP astrology and you know, probably uh, a career, career, vocation, profession, marriage and education is something uh, which is, you know, very easily understood uh, by so many uh, people. So I thought I'll keep uh, marriage, married life and um, love and also to talk about uh, vocation, career and profession. So these are the two topics I thought I'll keep. But in, if any, you know, uh, if, if there are any popular suggestions coming up, I would be open to make changes. And third third this, marriage. Third marriage, yeah, why not? Why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
I would like to throw the forum open for uh, questions to Dr. Datta. Uh, I understand there is already a question in the chat. Okay. And that is uh, by Mr. Umesh uh, Dodani. And he wants to know if Dr. Andrew's mother or any of his formal gurus also followed KP astrology. Okay. Thank you, Umesh Ji, for asking that question. My mother never followed KP astrology. My first guru did not follow KP astrology, but he was the person who told me to buy all the six readers from the Calcutta Book Fair. And he said, you must read all the six books. And uh, if you really want to go far ahead, you should do KP astrology. He was the first one to bring me that idea. I was... For, uh, probably, for KP, probably KP didn't exist at the time of your mother's uh, working life. Yes, the KP astrology did exist because uh, Krishnamurti ji was an active practitioner of astrology uh, during 1950s, uh, 60s and early 70s, expired in 72. So my mother was uh, uh, very much into uh, practice during the 1970s and 80s where KP was really uh, you know, picking up a lot of pace. So, but my mother uh, never talked about KP astrology or the, um, the sub lord or the subdivision method. But my first Guruji, he was, uh, he uh, got that, uh, he introduced me to that name, Krishnamurti Paddhati. And I was formally trained in Krishnamurti Paddhati uh, by my second Guruji, uh, PBK Puneshwar Raoji of Hyderabad. And uh, he, he, he is like uh, a very uh, famous, he, he used to be a very famous astrologer in Hyderabad. He expired a couple of years back. And his Guruji was Bivian Sarmaji of Warangal, who happened to be the direct student of K.S. Krishnamurti ji, in whose house he stayed for more than two months and learned KP astrology from KS Krishnamurti ji directly. At the end of his learning, KS Krishnamurti ji initiated him into Uchista Ganapati sadhana with the same mantra. Bivian Sarma ji is not only my Guruji's Jyotish Guru, he is also the mantra guru. So Bivian Sarma ji initiated my Guruji. And my Guruji in his entire lifetime, he had thousands of students because he used to run the Universal College of Astrology and Occult Science in Hyderabad uh, with thousands of students. He only initiated 12 of his students into Uchista Ganapati Sadhana. I was the last one to be initiated by him. After me, he never initiated anyone and then was his sad demise. So I was formally trained in KP Astrology uh, through that Gharana system, through that lineage by P, uh, PVK Purneswar Raoji. Of surely, surely you are a blessed soul and very lucky. There's a question here from Saurabh. Uh, he says, I have an impression that KP is particularly good at timing events and for Prashna. Is that how Andrew G looks at it too? Can that be called the USP of KP astrology? Okay, a fantastic question. That's a fantastic question. Um, the, the original... KP astrology came into the picture for answering questions. The first book K.S. Krishnamurti ji wrote was Horari astrology, which eventually became the sixth reader, but actually that is the first book. It was all about answering questions. 1965, he published his volume one, volume two with Sagar publications. But then that entire two volume was completely revamped. 1971, his first self-published uh, book came, which was Horari Astrology. So KP has the genesis of answering direct question. So if you ask me question like, uh, I'm not getting married. I I'm talking about the Indian context. I'm not getting married. I know I'm 40 years old now. Is there any marriage promised in my chart? If so, when my marriage is going to happen and how is going to be my married life? You can churn out a very decisive prediction within half an hour. And I'm taking into account your casting of horoscope and understanding and all that. Within half an hour, you can give a clear cut, unambiguous, no beating around the bush kind of answer. 
Now, that was the original genesis of KP, giving direct answer, whether it is from birth horoscope or from Prashna chart. Later on, these subdivisions were used to create a specific form of Prashna chart, which came to be known as KP Prashna chart, 1 to 2, 49 number system. Now, in original KP books and the Astrology and Atrishta magazine, which K.S. Krishnamurti used to uh, case uh, just just a minute. Uh, something happened with the uh, visibility. Okay, so in those magazines, K. S. Krishnamurti used to make qualitative analysis as well. What I mean by that is, if somebody was asking the same question, I'm not getting married. Whether do I do I have a married life? If so, uh, how is the quality of that married life? T.S. Krishnamurti has shown in his original articles, you can give qualitative answers by blending planetary effects with the Rashi effects and the Bhava effects. However, that is something which I was fortunate to learn from Puneshwar Rauji. I have taught it in my video courses, in my classes that I take. However, many a times you will find many people doing KP astrology, they kind of bring it down to the level of numbers as if it's all quantitative. Okay, your fifth cast sublord is occupied in the seventh and it's the uh, in star of such and such planet showing seven and 11. And okay, so I understand five, six, two, 11 is there. Now, what is the answer? What's the answer? They are not able to say that. So that is where good grooming and good training in KP astrology is needed, where you would be able to satisfy the client or satisfy your uh, uh, the, the consultee who comes to you with answer that suffices his need. So KP is not only Prashna. But KP is really very good if you can frame a clear uh, matter in your mind, like what you would like to know. For example, can I become an astrologer? If so, can I become a professional astrologer? And if so, can I become a successful professional astrologer? And if so, can I become a successful professional astrologer who makes a lot of income? You see, there are four levels of question. So if somebody says, can I become an astrologer? I don't need to see your chart. I can say, yes, you can. Read five books and you're an astrologer. Is that so? No, that's not so. So who is an astrologer? Okay, Parashara has given a lot of definition of that. So if the question is very well said, so as a KP astrologer, I will never take that question. If somebody says, can I become an astrologer? I said, for what? Why do you want to become an astrologer? No, no. Can I become a practicing astrologer? I said, now that's a question. So can I become a practicing astrologer? If somebody says, can I dabble in astrology? Well, that you can do. You can dabble in anything. You can dabble in nuclear science if you want. So can I become a successful professional astrologer making my livelihood and earning? Now that is where KP will give you, a, you know, a solid home run. It's a, it's, a, it's a shot, which is a home run shot. Okay, those of you who are a New York Yankees fan and... Um, Okay, so my days in Boston, I still remember the the the, the, ba the baseball fans and you know New York in, Yankees and the I, I forgot the fact, Boston team. <laughs> in fact, there is a qualitative touch even to Ashtakvarga, which is essentially a digital and quantitative system. But even within Ashtakvarga, there are enough hints for qualitative comments also. Exactly. So exactly. of course, uh, KP being a much wider system, it must be including that. There's a question from Mr. Jitendra. Is the house division fixed in KP? No. Okay. Um, okay, I, 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 um, I will answer it in this way. K.S. Krishnamurti used the Placidus system of house division, which is the semi-arc system. Now, semi-arc house division system, there are many 
house division systems which are based on uh, raffles arc of median sealy ramc so placidus is one topocentric is one regiomontanus is one um and uh, there is one more which used to be used by one uh, indian bengali gentleman i forgot the uh, so topocentric and placidus are uh, you know two big competitors in house division system so let me uh, tell you to answer your question is not a single simple answer kp uses placidus house division it is a fixed house division system i do not know how to answer that the house division method is the same rules and formulas are same so if you say what is the method of house division yes kp uses placidus house division now is the houses going to remain the same no houses are going to vary depending on which latitude i am born if i am born between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn within this band of latitude my variation of the bhavas 30 degree more or less the variation in bhavas is going to be towards the mean in a bell curve is going to be towards the mean or average which simply means it will tend towards 30 degree but the more i go northern latitude and southern latitude beyond tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn my placidus house division is now going to become very awry it will suddenly expand to 35 degree 37 degree two bhavas three bhavas going into one rashi so there has been significant research published by the american federation of astrologers wherein one person showed the efficacy of all the different house division system roughly about 25 house division system and what was found to be having very less deviation was the topocentric house division so topocentric house division is one such arc based divisional system of house uh, coming you know deriving the houses even in very northern latitudes it will not tend to deviate okay it will not try to deviate from the mean and go towards the left tail or the right tail if we take a, a normal gaussian curve so if you want to follow kp astrology as an indian astrologer and you have 95% of your clients coming from india follow placidus system of house division if you are having a large number of your clients coming from um north america and you know europe and northern europe and russia or australia south africa it is a much better professional sense to use topocentric house division and if you are using topocentric house division and uh, placidus house division together for any people who are coming within the latitude band of a uh, tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn you will hardly find any difference it will be 99.99% similar it will be different by few seconds but as you are moving closer to the tropic of cancer or closer to the tropic of capricorn and you cross that limit of latitude you will find wide variation coming in placidus and topocentric where topocentric it has a higher hit ratio than the placidus yeah i hope It's a, it was a simple question, but the answer is very complicated. <laughs> uh, Doctor Andrew, there is a uh, uh, there is a request uh, to find out what are the prerequisites to understand your topic of presentation better during the Jyotish Mela 2021. Okay, and that okay. I suppose okay. is the last question. And and that that that's a that's a very good and brilliant question. I must also say, so. the only prerequisite is just know the nine planetary karakatvas the 12 rashi karakatvas and the 12 bhavas karakatvas and the 27 nakshatras if you know these four you are all set to embark upon an astrological journey be it kp be it vedic be it anything so just know 
from any standard uh, uh, good textbook. Uh, Kane Rauji's publications have very, very good books on uh, fundamentals and advanced uh, topics, Kane Rauji's uh, books and um, that, that group of um, authors have done phenomenally good work. You can read from there. Uh, those of you who are from uh, US and Europe, you can read books by uh, Hart Defoe and Robert Savoda. Dr. David Frawley, who, is a, uh, uh, who has received the highest civilian award from our country. Uh, Astrology of the Seers is another very good book of Dr. David Frawley. Um, uh, also, uh, Komila Ji has written very good book on Nakshatra, Komila Sutton. So Kamila Ji has written very good book. Dennis Harness Ji has written very good book on Nakshatra. So uh, if, if you take the top 10 books in the field of astrology, you know, irrespective of Vedic, KP or Indian or Western, the top 10 books, if you just read the fundamental first five chapters of planetary signification, Rashi, Bhava and Nakshatra, only these four signification you can understand KP astrology because KP is a uh, different Vedic expert. You don't have to be a Gemini expert. You don't have to be any expert. Just come with some basic reading done and you're all set. Dr. Dutta, this has been a very, very interesting discussion. And uh, uh, I really admire your memory for dates and names and uh, your teaching style. So I'm sure uh, we are all going to enjoy your presentations for the Jyotish Mela and uh, all the best. Thank you so Thank much. You. It Thank was you a so pleasure much, talking Vinayji. to you. Thank you so much, Vinayji, uh, for um, you know, helping me to uh, speak well today because it's also, uh, hmm. because if, if Lagna prospers, the seventh will also prosper. So uh, <laughs> the Lagna and seven have a, a very unique connection. So the axis, axis is very important. So uh, everything was balanced because uh, you, you were there and uh, you helped me to uh, speak my uh, mind. And also thanks to Arsha Vidya, Guru Kulam organizers, especially Meenakshi ji and Saurav ji for giving me this uh, chance to talk with all of you. And uh, I will be very glad to make my presentation and I'll always be available for reaching out anytime. So it's my uh, uh, good luck and pleasure as well. Thank you, Dr. Dutta. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. So I will Namaste. say thank you to Vinayji as well as Dr. Andrew Dutta for such an interesting conversation. And uh, I think I learned a lot uh, about KP. So I, I did not have any idea about like how the KP is structured and you know even having a basic knowledge of where the astrology a person can know. So thanks a lot for that. So with, yeah, so with uh, uh, that, I would like to go towards. Do anybody have any further question which you would like to talk about before we close the session? I don't think. No, no, thank you. Unless it's 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 not a problem. Uh, uh, sort of, can you please help us in the mantra, please? Sure, thank you. Thanks a lot, Dr. Andrew. Um, very, you, very interesting and Vinayji, thanks a lot for navigating it. Um, really appreciated all of it and uh, looking forward to the Jyotish Kumbha lecture. Uh, um, we'll do the closing mantra. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma kaschit dukkha bhag bhave Om shanti 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 Hari Om Namaskar everyone Thank you Thank you everyone Thank you Vinayji Thank you Thank you Dr.